you want to repeat this process over and over and over. But what you really want to do is you want to go as fast as you can without a capacitor for the simple fact is you want to put a lot of this radiant energy to the source. Thinking about which is more efficient regarding radiant energy collection a system with the, a, an inductor or without and through this experiment he has shown that it, uh, he apparently has seen radiant come out of it from the switching because it makes sense he's moving potential maybe it, you know it's, that's what an inductor does it moves potential so maybe that's just all you need to do to generate uh, the radiant in, inverted polarity spike so it might you know before looking at this again and hearing what he's saying again probably the 10th time I, he might be on to something you know because if you're not inducing current into a coil in the circuit you're not going to have as much of a voltage gain, but you're also going to have no loss in that coil. So, <laughs> the only place to create loss is in one of these three components. And, of course, whatever loss happens at the switch, which is there anyway with or without an inductor. This is just your trigger signal. There's no loss there, and it's just small, tiny amount of thing. It's just for triggering the transistor. Um, this might be a good, good uh, uh, science project if you want to uh, determine if it's uh, more efficient to induce negative flyback energy with a inductor or without. And I think that's what he was doing here. No inductor. But inside the batteries there are, you know, conductive plates, so they are inducing uh, voltage. And a magnetic field is probably happening inside the battery. When that induction happens through the plates of the battery, uh, the potential is going to put, try to push current through the, the elements of the battery. And whatever elements in that battery that are not willing to polarize with that potential will resist and there will be some of that batteries have resistance and you know, not all of the ions in the battery are going to be uh, you know cooperating with the potential shift that's probably where this radiant is coming from because of the you know I had a thought the other day you know thinking about the superconductors if you don't have any reluctance in the coil or any type of resistance do you have any radiant energy if you don't have resistance and you're let's say you're pulsing a superconductor and uh, I don't think you're going to get any um, push back, rebound, what are some words, recoil, um, racquetball, you know, bounce, no bounce, What's, what are you bouncing off of, there's nothing to bounce off of inside of a superconductor, everything is cooperating with the current flow, 100%. <laughs> There's nothing, there's no, there's no reluctance, there's no resistance. 
So is there any recoil? Is there any bounce? I don't think so. But there's still a magnetic field. And maybe once the magnetic field encounters a secondary external exogenous magnetic field, it might have a form of uh, competition. You know, if the two magnet, if, let's say, you know, they're, the fields are alike and they're repelling. And they don't want to, one of the fields doesn't want to turn around to stop repelling the other field. They were, they, both fields refused to turn around to one of them to show the opposite face to essentially stop repelling and now attract. I mean, those circumstances, those circumstances are out there in the, you know, astrological realm, planets and whatnot. They're bound to other rotational forces and whatnot. And occasionally, you have a light field that refuse to stop facing each other and they just pass each other and facing each other. Uh, which would cause a lot of problems on those two planets, earthquakes, whatever. Or anything caught in the middle of those two planets would be dealing with a lot of problems. But uh, the superconductor doesn't have any resistance, so is there any... Is there a magnetic field though? Yes. I don't believe you need resistance to have a magnetic field. I believe you just need current flow. You just need electron flow to be more specific. Or you don't want to call them electrons. Um, you just need vibration without any resistance to that vibration. Because it's vibration that causes the magnetic field. Okay. If you have resistance to a vibration, you'll have things like heat, recoil, flyback. And that's why it's useful to harness the flyback as Bedini is doing, because he knows very well that what I'm saying here is that this resistance in the coil, it, 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 it doesn't have to be wasted in the form of heat. So you can capture it before it turns into heat. And that's what he did with the SG. But in a superconductor, there is no rebound. But there's still a magnetic field. Because we are still conducting vibration. It's just having the ohms causes the feedback, or I guess the feedback, you know. So what happens is, as your voltage goes up, your current, you have a, your, your current drops, okay? Because why? Because why does your voltage drop? It drops when you start using power. And when you use power, your current goes up. Okay? And as the current goes up, the coil's resistance begins to diminish and the coil stops resisting and starts allowing the flow. In the beginning of the initial charge of the coil, it resists because it has not yet been polarized in the, to the vibrational orientation of the molecules in the copper. And you, turn, you take the charge away from the copper and the molecules of copper want to return to how they were facing before. And that's the whole deal there. Um, if there it'd be nice to, to find a way to charge uh, car, copper at say some frequency to keep it polarized. And you could then remove the charge and <laughs> well there you have it, you have a superconductor. 
it's staying polarized, all the ions in the copper are staying oriented the same angle towards one direction. And, and that, uh, that angular uh, arrangement of the ions is, is established by vibration of the copper. Uh, it's, it establishes geometry, the vibration does. So it creates these specific angles to enable current flow to move freely without any, without having to hit walls or cut corners. And you have everything, you know, lined up in angles, like, let's say 45s like that. The current can just ride the rails. You got rails here. But, uh, that's the basic idea behind uh, polarizing materials, met minerals or metals, to then turn them into uh, magnets, essentially, for a brief moment or permanently if you keep them charged. But as soon as you remove the charge, they, the coil no longer has polarization, and that tells you that the copper, you know, molecules went back to the position that they were in before they received a potential to align them and have them all face at attention. Or let's say a bunch of cadets standing in the road you know, doing their attention sign. They're all facing the same way and whatever. That's, that's, that's the kind of the thing going on inside the copper coil. That alignment enables the uh, energy to flow smoothly. Without that, the energy uh, gets bounced all over the place. And so now you can see where radiance comes in. When you see energy bouncing all over the place, now you can see radiant energy coming into the picture. And radiant energy is pretty much energy that's being bounced bounce back and the reverse polarity and quite frankly it is bouncing back and exactly it's is exactly what it's doing it's, it's reversing polarity to come back to your circuit and that's what he means by open circuit because if you can close the gate and open it before the, the current meets up with the voltage on the other end of the circuit then you have an open circuit I'll say that again. If you can close the gate and open it before the current makes its way and meets up with the voltage on the other end, because the voltage is going to meet the other end of the circuit before the current does. But if you can open up that switch before the current gets, catches up to the voltage, you never really close the circuit. I was trying to understand what he meant by open circuit. Was Getting onto it, I knew it had something to do with the, the transistor. And that's what it is. It does, it has to do with the transistor being open when it's open. So when it closes, the voltage already shoots across there before the current it makes it to the other end. The current is lagging behind. It's on its way. Um, but, if you can open up that switch before it gets there, You don't use any current. Because to use current, it needs to meet on the other end of the circuit. But you use voltage. You do use the voltage. But not the current. 
the, the current didn't make it on time. You opened up the switch before it got there. Now, the current's trying to get there. And it's like, hey, there's the switch is open. Or I can't get through here. It stops right there. You can't, you can't come over here on this side. It has to complete the cycle to uh, make it short itself out and use up its energy. Switch opened up before it can get through. That's it for tonight, guys. I hope that uh, resonated.